Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed the characteristics of images formed by concave mirrors when the object is placed at different places in front of the mirror. We looked at when the object is placed beyond C and we realized that the object is formed in between C and F and it's diminished or smaller than the object and it's inverted at the same time. We also looked at an uh, image formed when an object is at infinity. We realized that the object will, the image will be formed at f and it will be smaller than the object also inverted. We also looked at an object at c where we realized that the image which will be formed will be formed at c, same size as the object, same distance from the mirror, but of course inverted. So in this lesson, we are going to consider three other cases, that is the object between C and F. Then we are going to look at the object between F and P, that is the pole. Then we are going to look at when an object is placed at F. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how to draw a ray diagram of an object placed between C and F then a ray diagram of an object placed at F, then finally a ray diagram of an object placed between F and P and their characteristics of the image formed. The first object that we're going to consider is an object placed between the center of curvature and the principal focus, that is C and F, between C and F. And in this case, we can use the rays that we just discussed, any of the four rays, so we'll use only two, like one, we can take a ray from the tip parallel to the principal axis, like this one here. This ray will be reflected through F. So this ray from the tip parallel to the principal axis will be reflected through F like that. Then now, the second ray that we can use in this case is a ray from the tip through the center of curvature then it will get reflected to the mirror and back on its own path so in this case if you have a ray from the center of curvature to the tip then it will get reflected back on its own path so you should be very keen in drawing this one so it will go from the tip it should pass at the center of curvature then it will get reflected back on its own path. So in this case, the idea is where they meet, that will be the tip of the image that is formed of that object. So this will be the image which is formed, this is the image, and this is the object. Now, can we formulate the characteristics of this image which is formed? Yes, the image is real. The image is real because it's being formed by real rays. Then two, the image is inverted. It's inverted. It is upside down. You can say it is upside down. Then three, the image is beyond C. It is beyond C. And then finally, the image is magnified. Image is magnified. Magnified means it is larger than the object. So the second object that we are going to consider is an object at F. And in this case, we are going to draw a ray diagram and then later formulate the characteristics of the images that is formed. Like in this case, if we use the first ray, that is a ray from the tip of the object to the mirror and which is parallel to the principal axis like this one here then this ray is going to be reflected through f so if it gets reflected through f here it will look like that so that is a ray parallel to the principal axis to the mirror then getting reflected through f then the second ray that we can consider is a ray which is passing through c to the tip of the object like in this case, if we draw from the tip of the object and passing through C, then our ray will look like this. 
this will be our ray let me draw a better one which is passing through all those points then our ray will be like that so this ray will also be moving in that direction so the idea is these two rays as you can see they are now parallel they can never meet they are parallel rays and also even if you proceed you you extrapolate them to the other side they can never meet so the image which will be formed will be formed at infinity infinity remember when we had rays from infinity they formed an image at f now when we have an object at f they form an image at infinity so when an image is formed at infinity infinity means you cannot know it you cannot see it and it's very far away from us so an image which you cannot see then the characteristics of the image formed in this case is infinity infinity has no description it's just infinity you cannot know it you cannot see it you cannot touch it it's very far away from us therefore no one can describe it so the third object that we are going to consider is an object between the focal point and the pole in this case we are going to use any of the two rays that we just discussed one of the rays that i want to use here is a ray which is parallel to the principal axis from the tip of this object so if this is our first ray this ray will be reflected through f n ray which is parallel to the principal axis always get reflected through f so if it gets reflected through f like that that will be our first ray and now we can consider another ray this ray we are going to draw a ray through c to the tip of that object so if we draw this ray to the tip and through c then it's going to be a ray like this one here it's going to be a ray like this so in this case this ray will be will go to the mirror and then get reflected back on its own path so as you can see, as we proceed to, towards this left hand side, these rays can never meet. They are diverging. They are moving away from each other. But if we consider on the other end here on the mirror, these rays are coming closer and closer to each other. Therefore, it means if we decide to extrapolate behind the mirror, behind the mirror, these rays are not going there. So these are a virtual rays. So we just draw them using dots. So if we proceed with these rays behind the mirror with the dots, therefore it we are going to form something like this. So here if we proceed with the dots behind the mirror, then these rays are going to meet behind the mirror, but in front of the mirror here they will never meet. So if you extrapolate like that and you find that they can meet somewhere behind the mirror, then where they meet those virtual rays where they meet, that, way, that is where an image will be formed. So in this case, where the image is formed, that's where we join. And this image which will be formed will not be real because it's not formed by real rays. So it's also a virtual image which we draw using dots. So in this case, the image which will be formed will be virtual behind the mirror and it's larger than the object. This is the object, then this is the image. The image is virtual because it's formed behind the mirror by these virtual rays because rays cannot literally go there then this image is magnified it's larger than the object then this image is upright remember the other images that we have been forming they were upside down in this case the image is upright as the object so we can now write down this uh, characteristic of the image formed so the first one the image is upright this image is upright then the image is behind the mirror behind the mirror then another characteristic is that the image is virtual virtual means it's an image which cannot be formed on the screen cannot be formed on the screen or you can say it's an image which is formed by virtual rays so this the rays which are behind here are what we call virtual rays these are virtual virtual rays then this is also a virtual image 
So virtual rays, when they converge, they form a virtual image. When real rays converge, they form a real image. So another characteristic about this image is that it is larger than the object. That is very important to note. So it's also larger than the object, or you can say it is magnified. It's magnified. So that is all about image formed by concave mirrors. So that will mark the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss image formed by convex mirrors.